Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Collins, realtor with the Collins Family Realty Group uh, at Keller Williams. Um, we are all wondering, what do we talk about? How do we pre-qualify any leads that come to us? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about these lead sheets. Lead sheets are, um, it's just a very simple um, document. Um, it's a two-sided document that provides you the questions to ask to talk about, uh, talk to um, leads that come in, whether they're buying or selling. We're going to start with a buyer lead sheet and we're going to talk about um, like the, the kind of flow of the sheet and the importance of the information. And then we're going to talk about the listing lead sheet as well. Um, so hopefully this video will be concise if I can make that happen. And here we go. Let me show you what we're doing here. So um, the link to these um, lead sheets are in the description below. Um, so you can download them as well. Okay, so we're going to start with this buyer lead sheet. And this sheet here is a very simple document when we um, really take a look at it. Um, the lead source, the property that prompted the call, right? So it's always a good idea to record where you got the lead from, right? Was it um, a, a sign call? Was it a call from a, a listing sign? Or um, did they Google you? Or did they um, Google the house? That sort of thing. Um, did they come from Zillow, wherever? So always um, when you're, when you, whether they call you or you call them, um, regardless, I always thank them for uh, contacting you. And then ask them if um, they remember how they got your phone number. It's a good idea to do that. And then you can put that down here just so that you have a record of where they came from. And of course, you always want to make sure you put the date on there so that you know when that information is relevant. Uh, the contact info box is very simple. Name, email, the street address, right? Um, during escrow, you're going to need to know what their current address is. But also, we can get this information so we can, call, we can send them a thank you card after talking with them. Um, if they mention their kids' names, you don't have to go out of your way to ask them what their kids' names or whatever, but if they if you start asking them about the pre-qualification questions, it may come up later on that they have kids and you can ask them about their their kids, you know, to explain about, uh, you know, tell them about your kids, you know, just make that connection with them. We're always trying to make personal connections with the clients. Um, home phone, cell phone, work phone, fax number, if those are, you know, uh, if that's necessary, you may not need that right away, but always definitely get at least the cell phone number. That's going to be very important. Um, I always ask them, like, well, what's the best way? Would you prefer me to call you on your cell phone, text you, email you, that sort of thing? And then, of course, ask what times are best. So when we talk about the buyer consultation, um, really what we're really looking for here is um, indication of whether they already have a real estate agent, if they're already, um, if they're already represented. But what we're also trying to figure out is their buyer's motivation. Buyer motivation is always going to be an important factor in determining whether the lead is going to be an immediate lead or somebody that we're going to put on a nurture like drip campaign. So the buyer consultation pre-qualification questions. Has an agent taken you out to show you any properties? Um, you can mark yes or no. And if they do say yes, just say, how's that going? You know, you can always find out, um, ask them questions. Now, you can tell them when you when you start this conversation and you, you pick up the phone and somebody says, hey, this is um, so-and-so and I want to look at a house wherever. And you go, okay, great. You grab your lead sheet, whether you have a PDF version and you just write on it with your, your finger, your phone, or you have um, a stack of them printed out. That's what I have right here. I keep a, a stack of buyer lead sheets and I keep a stack of seller lead sheets right here on my desk so that I always have lead sheets available. Um, you can say, Hey, I have some, I have a few questions for you just so that we can get started. And you can ask these questions right down the way. Um, but with practice, you should be able to work these more naturally into conversation instead of making it sound like you're reading from a piece of paper. Um, but there is no specific right way. I do feel like that people, if, if you can work these more, um, naturally into conversation, um, instead of just going, okay, question number one, has an agent taken you out and shown you any properties? That sounds a little bit better or worse than, okay, well, I'm glad that you called me. I'm just curious, have you had any um, agents show you properties in the last, you know, 30 to 60 days? And if they say yes, you go, okay, well, how's that going? Like, is it, are they, do you feel like that you are working well together? 
Um, and maybe they say yes. And if that's the case, then you know that this may be not be a lead. They're just trying to figure out, you know, about this actual property. Um, but if they're like, no, I haven't had anybody take me out or no, um, I have had a couple of people take me out, but I don't, I, I'm not working with any of them. Then, then you basically have the, the clear to pursue them as your client. Um, so is there anybody else buying the home with you? You, you need to know if you're talking to the decision maker or the decision making team, right? Most, um, spouses usually don't just go out and buy houses by themselves. You want to make sure that if they're, uh, working together, if they're qualifying together, that sort of thing, um, that you have both of them, uh, you have both their information who will be living in your home. So this is a good one. It's like, okay, is it just going to be you? And you know, if, if you're talking, let's just say you're talking to Mary and Mary says, um, and you ask them, you know, if you're by, if Mary's buying the house with anybody else and she goes, oh yes, my husband. And you go, okay, well, what's your husband's name? And then, um, so is it just going to be you and John at, at in this house? Right. So then that that sounds better than who will be living in your home. So you can, um, you know, do something like that. Just kind of work it more into a natural conversation. Um, ask them how long they've been looking for a home. Right. Find out um, if they just got started in the process or if they have been working for quite some time. And that will kind of give you a gauge of when um, it'll give you a kind of a gauge of how how far into the process they are. Um, and then you can always just ask them, you know, why are you moving? This is good. This is their motivation. Are they, are they looking to relocate to be closer to family? Um, is it a job relocation? There's, there's lots of reasons why people want to move. Um, maybe they just own, they, they rent right now and the rent has gone up too high and they figured it's a waste of money to, you know, do something like that to, to keep renting. So, Always want to find out what their motivation is. And then, of course, you can ask them out if they rent or rent to own, rent or own now. If they're renters, then, you know, find out when their lease is up so that, you know, if they have seven months still on their lease, then uh, you, you have to find out if they're willing to break the lease in order to um, uh, in order to buy a house. Or do you have to wait until, you know, their seven month lease runs out? So then again, more more information toward their motivation. Um, and of course, if they own a house, then you can ask them if they already have their house listed. And if they don't already have their house listed, you know, if that's something that they need to sell before they can buy a house, which is also a good thing that that works out in your favor as well, because if they don't have it listed and they do need to sell it, then there you go. You get a listing and a buyer. So it's a really great um, deal for you. So, um, have you signed a listing agreement with a real estate agent to sell your home? Yes or no. And if no, then when would be a good time to get together so I can give you a market analysis on your home, right? So right there, you're already just, you just shifted from this being a buyer call to possibly a listing call as well. Um, and then you can work on that as well, um, getting, getting a good time when they can do that. Um, ask if they're going to be getting a mortgage or if they're going to be paying cash with that sale. So some questions. So some questions that have to do with that. So um, are you already pre-approved by a lender? Yes or no. If yes, who are you working with? You want to get their name, phone number, email address so you can get that pre-approval letter quickly. Um, ask them what they're pre-approved for or what their down payment is going to be. And it says if you want to recommend a lender, um, I have trusted lenders who have always provided job quality. It gives you a little bit of like a little script here that um, lets you know that you can say, oh, if you're not working with a lender, let's, let's look at um, some of the ones that we've got. Uh, what price range are you comfortable with? Is there anyone else who would be involved in the home buying decision? Um, we already know from question two here, is there anybody else buying the home with you? So this one right here, you can actually, um, you could probably skip this part if you already have question two answered, right? Because it's basically the same question, or you can just fill out question two and then come down here and put that in here. And then you can ask them what their price range that they're comfortable with. Um, on a scale of one to 10, meaning you must buy a home as quickly as possible. And one meaning that you are not sure you're really buying anything. How would you rate yourself? Right? So, um, anything less than a 10, right? You want to find out what, what would it take for you to be a 10, right? What is, what is the, the, you're basically asking the client to rate themselves on how quickly they want to make the purchase. And then you're asking them if they give you anything less than I want to buy right now, what, what their, um, like what their hindrances are, what are their objections already? You're, you're already trying to get those things out of the way. 
So if, if they say that they're an eight, then you know, Hey, they're pretty serious, but what, so what would make you attend that you want to buy right now? And they, it could be interest rates. It could be building up their savings account. It could be, they don't know what they're pre-approved for. You know, there could be tons of reasons. So you definitely want to look at those, um, this again as motivation and it's such a huge huge deal making sure that you know what their motivation is um, and this is going to tell you a lot um, so when do you need to be in your new home right this is always a good one right again it goes along with question number nine on a scale of one to ten you know what is your urgency um, a ready willing and able buyer is going to be very urgent in making that purchase so it says, I'd love to help you buy a home in order to help you find a perfect home. All we need to do is set an appointment with all the decision makers or with everybody involved. And again, this kind of stuff I hear, you don't need to necessarily read word for word. Um, you can put in there with John or like if you know their spouse name or whatever. Um, so you can put that in there. Um, so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. What's a better day um, to meet this day at this time or this day at this time? Um we call that uh, was that it's an optional. Uh, it's an options close. So you're giving them two options. You're saying, are you going to be available Thursday at five, or would you like to meet Saturday at noon, right? And then they go, ah, uh, no, Sunday at two would be better for me. You know that type of thing. You're you're assuming that they're going to meet, and you're not giving them that really the option to say no. You're just saying, hey, let's let's meet up here. What about this day or this day? And then if they're interested, they're going to say yes. Let's meet on this day. This is this day or time works best for me. And then you can make that work for them. But if they go, well, I don't really want to meet or whatever, then you kind of know, look, look, they're not that serious. Like, even though they gave you this information or maybe they haven't given you this information, who knows? Um, you're, you're going to use this lead sheet exactly to judge how urgent they are if they're ready, willing, and able, right? That's what we want. We're ready, willing, and able buyers. Are they ready to buy? Are they in a position? Are they uh, willing to buy? Are they, they, they want to move forward? And are they able? Are they pre-approved? Or are they willing to get pre-approved? in order to um, start the process. And then um, other information here, um, you can put any sort of notes here. You can, if they talk about their dogs, right? They don't have kids, but maybe they have pets. Like write down their pets' names, their pets' names. Um, it's it's very important that, that you connect with them, with people on their terms. So um, any information else when they're talking, this is, this is a point where you ask a question and then you let them talk. Um, you get a lot of information from them just by being quiet and listening um even sometimes when they're when they're done talking give them an extra two or three seconds of quiet and either they're gonna go hello are you still there you go oh yep i was just waiting for you to finish or you know whatever um or they're gonna just keep on talking and giving you more information the more information you have the better um, position you are to help them both you know about what they need and what they want and what their situation is so um, all notes are really, really, really helpful at this stage. And down here at the bottom, it says behavioral style is the DISC. Um, so this is, um, there's four major personality types um, that uh, you you can, we're, we can't go into that. It's a, it's a huge um, undertaking for that. But you as an agent should um, talk to your, um, talk to your leadership about having a DISC profile done for yourself. Um, I know I've had mine done here and I have my personal, my personal report here for, uh, my KPA and that's the Keller personality assessment. And this one here tells me what my, um, strengths and weaknesses are and, you know, lots of different things about myself. And these are very helpful to know how I communicate with people. So that way, when I am personally talking to clients, I can try to match my personality to theirs so that we have a better connection. Um, so once you are familiar with the the DISC um, test and um, what each of the, which the D, I, S, and C mean and how they can relate to you, you can kind of circle and say, oh, this person is very analytical. Um, so they're going to be a, a high I or something like that. Um, so you know that you need to talk to them about statistics instead of being really emotional about stuff. Um, so that is the buyer lead sheet. Uh, to begin with. And again, the link is, uh, there's a link in the description below to down to view and download this um, Google Drive that I have here. So let's talk about seller lead sheets. Now, seller lead sheets are, for the all intents and purposes, exactly the same, right? They're, they're very, very much the same. Um, the only thing, 
Oh, this one does. It does have it's at the end. So um, so the listing lead sheet, you're going to fill out. You're going to start with the date, right? You want to make sure that you know what the date is um, for the contact information in this little box here. We're going to put out name, email address, phone number, right? You definitely need a street address because this is a listing. So there, you're going to need to know there. Um, same with the phone numbers, the, again, names of children, spouses, cell phone, all of these things. Here's a spouse name and a spouse, spouse um, cell phone number. So it's a good idea to get both. Um, but they move right into motivation because with listings, it's the most important thing is motivation. Um, so why are you moving? Where are you moving to? Are you planning on saying again, these are questions that you can just say, hey, let's let's talk about the I have some questions that I need to ask ask you so that we can get started. Or you can just pretend like this sheet doesn't exist and just work these questions in a conversation. Um, so cool. Now that I've got your contact information, um, just curious, like, why are you moving? Where are you, are you planning to stay in state or are you leaving to, you know, go be a family? Um, you know, and that question right there, that's a pretty loaded double question. Why are you leaving and where are you going? Um, I've worked those into both into one, one question. And at that point, then I can sit back and listen to them. Tell me about themselves. People love to talk about themselves. It's just human nature. We, we love to discuss um, the things that are happening to us and what we're doing, especially when it's a positive or a, um, uh, uh, you know, just a really uh, a big part of their life. And so moving, selling their home is going to be a huge part of their life. So um, finding out what their motivation is, is really good. You, of course, want to know if they're working with an agent. Um, if they've signed an agreement already with an agent, that's going to make a big deal. If they have already, if they're already working with an agent or they've already signed an agreement, um, you have to basically cut this off. They are under contract with somebody um, and you are uh, ethically bound to not continue the conversation. So again, it's again, just right at the beginning, we want to find out um, if they're, if they're working with somebody. Um, so, but we're going to assume that, you know, for the most part, these are going to go our way. So we're going to say no to both those questions. And then how soon do you need to be there? Right. We always want to figure out what their timeline is. Um, will, will you be receiving any corporate relocation assistance, especially if they're moving for work? Are you thinking about selling your home as a for sale by owner? Yes or no. And on a scale of one to 10, here's your urgency, right? How, how fast do you need it? How motivated are you to sell your home? Um, what happens if your home won't sell in the amount of time, in the required amount of time? So if they said that they need to be there, let's say it's, uh, it's October right now. So let's just say they need to be there January, right? So that gives you about three months, you know, um, October, November, December. Yeah. So about three months of, of total time. If they, and you say, okay, well, what happens if we can't sell your home by January 1st? Are you still going to move? Um, will your house just be vacant? Like what, what are we doing? And then again, knowing that disc profile, knowing their personality type after talking with them for a few minutes, you're going to, you're going to get a very clear picture of, of what kind of personality they have. Then we want to talk about their house, right? So we, we've, we've realized we we've now talked about their motivation and we know what they're, what they want, what they expect and what they plan on having to happen. So now let's uh, tell me about your house. That's a very simple one, right? We're just going to figure out about the house and then, um, we're going to keep an eye on all of these questions here because this, this is tell me about your house, but then there's square feet, stories, bedrooms, bathrooms, how many years have you owned the house? Um, so they, they might tell you some of the stuff. It's like, oh, it's a four bedroom, uh, three bathroom. The house is, you know, 1900 square feet. And, you know, we've owned the house for, uh, you know, 15 years, uh, you know, all that stuff. Um, and they're going to tell you about the things like, okay. And if, if that's all they tell you, if they give you very little things, then, you know, you can kind of be like, okay, is it a two story or a single story? Oh, it's a single story. Perfect. Okay. Um, have you done any work on updates or any, you know, any repairs or anything on the house? Tell me about the entire history since you've moved in. Like, tell me about all your remodels. Tell me about all of the problems you've had. You want to get as much of this information as possible because it helps you determine the quality and the condition of the house um, that you're looking into. Does it have a pool? Rate your home on a scale of 1 to 10. And what would make it a 10? This is a really good one because we have lots of resources to um, uh, maybe possibly have work done prior to listing. So that way you know, you know, you, you know, like if you're going into this and you can kind of discuss these things with your seller. Um, and real quick, just as a, a little side note here, when you're going through these lead sheets here, this is the time, again, I said this with the, with the buyer's sheet, this is a time for you to be listening and listening very well, because they're going to tell you more things than you probably even have on this sheet here. 
So you always want to make sure you have a place for notes. Flip this page over. If this is two-sided or whatever, write in your columns, write notes everywhere that you can. When they start giving you addresses and stuff like that, and you want to know about the house, your, your gut is going to be like, well, I'll just look it up on the MLS real quick, or I'll just pull a title report real quick while I'm on the phone with them. Don't do that. Do that afterwards. After you hang up the phone, give them a hundred percent of your attention. They will realize that you're off doing other things. If you know, they're, they're talking to you and you're, you're doing the, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, you're, you're giving them very generic responses, whatever. They're going to be able to pick up on the fact that you're not giving them a hundred percent attention. And at this stage, we're brand new. We, we just got introduced. We're, we're trying to really make that connection. This is not the time to go do research. You have plenty of time after you hang up. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second, whatever, to go and do all the research and verify all the information that we have right now. We are just being an information gatherers and we are just doing our absolute best active listening so that they feel a hundred percent heard and felt while they're on the phone with you. Um, so, uh, then we're going to talk about financials after we, after we've discussed the house and we've gotten their information, we're going to talk about financials. These are really good because this is also something that we do to help figure out where the seller's head is as far as pricing and all that good stuff. So um, how much do you think your house is worth? You know that they've been on Zillow. You know that they've gone through and looked up pricing on their home. And maybe they even kind of figured out how to do some sort of comparables. Like, let's look at everything that's sold. Um, some, some sellers are, are savvy enough to figure it out. Like they have friends who are real estate agents, so they know that they can go onto Zillow and they can comp their house themselves. They're probably not going to be as good at it as we are, but you never know. Um, sometimes they're going to be right on top of it. So asking them how much they think their house is worth is going to let you know where they're at with the value. Um, if they say that their house, they think their house is worth $480,000, and then later on, you go to look up comps or whatever, and the comps say that the house is probably only worth four hundred thousand dollars. Then you know that you're that you're going to what kind of preparation work you're going to have to do to go to them, to your your seller, and say the house is not worth what you thought it was worth. Um, the market's changing, or that sort of thing. Or you know uh, they think the house is worth four eighty, and you comp it out at five fifteen, right? then that's a much easier conversation to have to say, hey, your house is actually worth more than what you thought. Um, good thing you called me, right? So we want to make sure that we're um, showing them our value. But it's always a very, very good idea to figure out where they are so that you know how to approach the situation once you've um, done your comps. How much do you owe on your mortgage, right? If you owe a first mortgage, second mortgage, or if you have a, a line of credit, um, a home equity loan, a home equity line of credit, anything like that. Um, you want to find out all of that information. Sometimes people get really weird. I don't know why sellers get weird about telling you how much you they already owe. Um, so it makes us, it makes our job a little bit easier when we're doing like a net sheet, when we send over our comp report, when we send over our CMAs and we um, send them a net sheet as well. Um, if they if they don't feel comfortable telling me how much their 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 current mortgage is, the balance is, um, I will usually just I'll put a note into this, the thing saying that this is not including how much you still owe so that they were, they're very clear that they're not going to walk away with $380,000. They have to deduct their whatever, how much, however much they owe. Um, and then this one right here is the how much do you want to net on your home? So these three things here are very closely related, but they can be very, very um, good pieces of information to have because... If somebody says um, they think their house is worth four hundred eighty thousand um, dollars, they owe. Let's just say they owe two fifty, right? Um, so that's right there. That's about a two hundred thirty thousand um, dollar net in their pocket without any closing costs. So that that's still an, just we're using round numbers here for an example. Um, but if they tell you how much do you want to net on your home, they say we have to walk. We have to walk with one hundred fifty thousand dollars, no matter what. OK. Um, that leaves $80,000 in wiggle room as far as for those prices um, for either pricing the house much lower so that it sits on the market for less time um, or if there's any seller credit necessary, that sort of thing. So if they want to net a minimum of $150,000, obviously we want to get them more money than $150,000 in their pocket. But 
if we list the house at 480 and then we have to drop the price to 470 and the seller need or the buyer needs a $10,000 seller credit, right? That's $20,000 um, that we just took out of their pocket between just those two things here. But they would still net um, $60,000 more than $150,000 that they want. So that way we can use, we know what their bare minimum amount that they need to make is. And we know if we have any wiggle room between what the house is worth and what um, they want to put in their pocket. So it's just a good idea to have that kind of information. So that way if you go, you go, well, we want to take this, you know, we want to give the the buyer a $20,000 credit by lowering the price and giving them a thing. They go, well, we're not going to make, make enough money. And then you can show them, well, you're actually still going to make, you know, $60,000 over 150, you know, in order to, that, that still is going to be well within the money. You said you had to net a minimum of 150, you know, and we're still getting you 210. So. Um, that right there. So it's just, it's just something that you can use later on down the road. This isn't something that you're going to talk about like right this minute. We're just, we're just getting this information to collect for later. Are you up to date on your payments, right? This is going to be important. If, um, uh, if they're behind on their payments, they may be in pre foreclosure, that sort of thing. Are you the sole owner of the house? Yes or no. Um, if not, who else is on title, right? Spouse could be siblings, something like that. Do any other, you own any other real estate, right? And this is again, not super important for this particular house, but this is something that you can then, um, file away for later. When you put this person into your database, you can say not only do they have a house, but they also have a second house or they have some investment land that they purchased many years ago or whatever. So you can kind of keep marketing to them afterwards or whatever. And so it's just a good idea to know that information. And then, well, on the buyer sheet, we do this kind of right up front on the seller sheet. Um, tracking and conversion is um, uh, kind of at the end here. So you always want to ask how you heard about our team or how you heard about um, you, you as an agent. Um, they're going to tell you Zillow, you know, Realtor, Google. Most people just call the internet Google. So they'll go, oh, I just, I Googled you. And it may, may not mean that they actually Googled you, but, you know, you can try to dig deeper or you could just leave it at that and just say internet, you know, it's just an internet lead. Uh, what three things do you expect from a realtor, right? So this is something that again, helps you understand what their expectations are. So that way you can meet those expectations. Um, um, I usually will give examples. Like when I ask what are, what are, what are things that you expect from a real estate agent? I would say like, for example, communication, like, how do you want to be communicated with? How often do you want to be communicated with? Right. And then, then usually that can kind of open the door to a, like, oh, we want this. And, you know, we want you to be you know, honest and reliable and, you know, that sort of thing. So you can kind of put these things down here um, just so that you have a better idea of how to treat your client. Right. If we ask them how they want to be treated and they tell us then we don't treat them that way, then we're not doing our jobs. And then ask them if they're going to set other appointments with who and when, um, if that, you know, maybe they're interviewing three or four different listing agents. Um, it's a good idea to know that. So that way you can, you know, do your absolute best. Uh, and then of course you want to make sure that you set the appointment, make sure that, um, you can even use this little script here. It says let's set an appointment so we can meet to find out exactly what you want. This appointment should last 30 minutes to an hour. We'll go through the home selling process and talk about your expectations and your goals. Would blank on blank, you know, would Friday, uh, at three or would, 2 p.m. on Friday or 3 p.m. on Thursday be a better time for you. Again, assuming we're, we're doing using that assumptive close, we're assuming that they're going to make that appointment. And then you write down what your appointment date and time is, and you follow up with them. You should have their, their address down here, so maybe you write them a quick thank you card, drop that in the mail so that they get it the next day um, or within the next uh, day or two. Um, if they... Um, if you're setting the appointment for, you know, too for, for soon, uh, like with that, you don't have enough time to, to mail anything or whatever, then, uh, you can always bring a thank you card with you. Uh, maybe a little small thank you gift. I like to bring like, um, uh, uh, candles because if we're trying to sell a house, we want it to smell good. We don't know what the house is going to smell like. So you bring one of those, um, like really smelly candles for whatever season it is. And, um, just tell them it's a thank you gift for taking the appointment and allowing you to interview for the position. It seems gracious. It seems, um, uh, very humble. And, um, hopefully that will leave a, a better impression 
uh, you showing up with a gift, thanking them for, you know, allowing you to um, take the time to, you know, talk with them. It's, it's just a really great impression to make. So those are the two listing lead sheets. Um, at this point, once you have this information, it's a good idea to transfer this information to your, um, your database. Maybe there's a note section in there or something. So that way you always have these notes with your, um, with your client. You could maybe even scan this listing lead sheet here as a document and then attach it to your, um, attach it to your clients, you know, contact information, um, in your, if you're using a, um, if you're using a CRM, usually you can attach documents to your, um, to your, to your client. So you can attach this so that you always have this information when with them, with, with their information. So that way you don't forget, um, but that's pretty much it. So hopefully these lead sheets will help you out, um, in your business and be able to, um, get you into, uh, uh, working with your clients faster and easier. And that's what we're, that's what we're hoping for building your business better and stronger. So that's it for me. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon.